Hey guys, so today we're going to look at the two ideas of precision and accuracy. These are two very important concepts in science class, even if they're not things that we use on a daily basis. You still have to understand the background to them. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uncertainty in numbers. And when we talk about sig figs, we automatically know that numbers in science class have some degree of uncertainty. That's because instruments have flaws, and measuring always requires some sort of estimation. So depending upon the instrument you're using, you may be able to get very, very precise measurements, which means very small increments, but you may not have a very good measure of accuracy. But we want measurements to be as accurate and as precise as possible. So the first thing we're going to talk about is accuracy. Accuracy is the level of correctness of a measurement, meaning how close is a measurement's value to the actual accepted value of the substance. So when we do a lab and we attempt to determine the density of something, if you are accurate in your density value, you are going to be close to the accepted answer. This can be described using both a single measurement, so that one measurement was very accurate, or you can look at an average of measurements. In this class, we're going to use a lot of averages because even though one measurement might be very accurate, a different one may not. And we wanna make sure that we have an average of those values. So accuracy is the correctness of a measurement. How close to the true value are you? Accuracy is evaluated by comparing the experimental value to the accepted value. So essentially, when we do labs, you may be asked to calculate the percent error, and the percent error tells us how accurate our measurement is, how correct it is. The experimental value is the value that you calculated doing the lab. The accepted value is the true or correct value based on references. In order to calculate the percent error, you use the following equation. Percent error equals experimental minus accepted divided by accepted all times 100. So when you use this equation right here, that section of the equation is going to give you a decimal value. So if you plug numbers in, for example, you calculated the density of aluminum to be 2.8. The accepted value of aluminum is 2.7. So 2.8 minus 2.7 divided by 2.7. And that's going to give us a value of 0, 037. Now notice that's a decimal value. Multiplying by this 100 changes that from a decimal to a percent. So that's a 3.7 percent error. The closer that the percent is to zero tells us that we have a more accurate measurement. So if the percent is a 94 percent, we are completely off base and we need to retake our measurements and relook at the lab. Percent error is something you will be calculating in different labs during this course. And I don't expect you to memorize the equation. You can look it up when needed. But remember, the smaller the percent error, the more accurate our measurement is. On the other hand, precision is how reproducible a measurement is. What that means is that if we take the same measurement or the same family of measurements multiple times, do we fall in a small range? How close is a group of measurements to one another? We cannot use a single measurement to describe this. We may only use a group because the whole idea is how close to each other are our measurements. So this depends upon the smallest divisions on the scale of our measuring instruments. If you are using a ruler with inches, your measurements are not going to be very precise compared to a ruler with centimeters and millimeters because the smaller the measurements are, the more precise our measurement can be. So again, precision is how reproducible is a measurement or how close in value is a group of measurements. When doing labs, if you're taking a time interval and you are collecting data for three separate trials of the same experiment, if you have numbers that are like 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1.4, I would retake that third data set because 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 are closely related, but that 1.4 is an outlier. You want your measurements to be as precise or as small grouped together as possible as you can get. We can evaluate the precision of a group of measurements by looking at the range from the smallest to the largest measurement in a group. The smaller the range is, the more precise the measurement has been. 
So again, when you are taking averages of three or four trials, you want your numbers to be in a smaller range of data. So here we have three examples that we're going to look at. This first photo, we have a target with four spots on the target off-centered. So this is considered precise because our four items are grouped very closely together. This is not considered accurate because in order to be accurate, they should be closer to the bullseye. The bullseye means that we are close to what the expected or accepted value. The second example is both precise and accurate. You have a tight grouping of those four spots and they are all clear and close to the bullseye. This last one is neither. It is not precise nor is it accurate because your four spots are separated and they don't focus on one section of the target more than another. So when it comes to pictures, the picture should be easy to see. Is your grouping small and is it close to the bullseye? If the grouping is small, it's considered precise. If it's close to the bullseye, it's considered accurate. If the grouping is large, like this third example, it is neither precise nor accurate. Now this last example, we are going to look at an actual science example. So we have three students who collected data for their lab. What we want to look at is their number values compared to each other and their number value compared to the accepted. So student A, 2.6, 2.7, 2.6, and the accepted density of aluminum is 2.69. So student A, I would consider being both accurate and precise. His numbers are close to the accepted value, 0 0.02 off, and there is a small range of difference between the three. Now student B, 1.53, 1.52, and 1.56, I would consider these precise but not accurate because when we look at the actual density of aluminum of 2.69, this value is not close to that. It's pretty far off. So while this range is small, they are not close to the accepted value. So looking at this last student, this one's going to be an arguable definition. I'm going to give you my reasons for thinking the way that I think. Having a value of 1.5 ranging to 3.2, this is not precise. There's a large range in between that area, so that student's measurements are not very valid. I would have redone one or two of them to make sure where the error may have been. Being that their average is 2.3, that's relatively close to 2.6. Remember, in science class, we want it to be less than 10%. So 2.3 minus 2.7 divided by 2.7 times 100. That gives us about 15% of error. Had they changed one of their data points, they would have had a, a closer accuracy measurement. So if I would have asked them to redo this third data set, maybe one of their numbers would have been closer to these two and it would have given them a better data range. So this one's not precise, but you could argue that it could be accurate based on the materials that they used or the measurements that they made in the classroom. Okay, so in class I want you to be aware when you take your measurements you want to do your best to be both accurate and precise. Make sure you're zeroing your scales. Make sure you're starting your measurements from the zero line of the ruler or meter stick, depending upon what you're using. Okay, once we're done with this, we're going to move on to the next idea in the review, and I will see you in class to do so.